Hello and welcome to MFG 302, Hyundai builds smart services for their connected machinery. I'm Steve Blackwell, the worldwide tech lead for manufacturing at Amazon Web Services. And today I'm gonna to be presenting this session with Mr. Choi, the ICT development team leader for Hyundai construction equipment. So the agenda for today's session is I'm gonna open up and give an overview of how smart products are being built on AWS. And then I'm going to hand over to Mr. Choi, who's going to go through the journey of Hyundai and how they built their connected machines and smart services on AWS. So if we look at manufacturing today and the trend that is going on, doesn't matter if we want to call it Industry 4.0, the industrial internet, you know, digital manufacturing, we're seeing kind of the focus in two main areas. The first one is within the four walls of the factory and driving for operational efficiency. And this is taking kind of data from your enterprise applications, your shop floor systems, be it your MES or your PLCs, and bringing that data together in the data lake to get you know, real-time insights through analytics and through machine learning to drive operational efficiencies. The other area we're seeing, and this is what we want to talk about today, is how manufacturers are looking to increase their revenue through smart connected products. And this is bringing them kind of, you know, more innovation to their customers and increasing their customer experience of using their actual products themselves. And if we actually look at, you know, smart products and machines, I wanna talk about, you know, the different kind of capabilities, use cases and components that actually make that up. So first of all, let's talk about you know, the capabilities of what needs to be in place to provide a smart product or machine. The first one is that we need to have a, the product connected securely and reliable to a cloud-based platform. And this is gonna give you know, a couple of things, is we need to ensure that all the communication that's going on between the actual product itself, or more specifically, the fleet of products has secure ability to send data and receive data from the cloud platform. The second component is that the cloud infrastructure needs to be reliable and scalable. And because we're actually providing the services to the end customer, the customer experience is kind of key. So making sure that the applications around your connected smart product um, is there is kind of key because any potential outage is going to affect your customer experience. So reliability is kind of key to that. And also scalability is their key because you know as you start to roll out the functions and features of your connected smart products, you want that platform to scale with you. You may actually start small with a couple of thousand or a couple of hundred and you may actually scale out to you know, 50,000, you know, millions of actually devices and you need your cloud platform to actually kind of scale out and support your workloads as you grow. And then, you know, looking at, you know, how that platform's actually going to be used, you need to make sure that you've actually got, you know, the, the data insights and the customer engagement. So you're not just looking at about, you know, how the end user is actually going to consume your platform, and that may be through a mobile application or through the actual connected device itself, but also you need to look at how you know, the, the business, you the manufacturer, is actually going to support and interact with that um, connected product and that platform. So now I want to talk about some use cases um, around what can be actually built out around your connected smart products. So the first one is around customer engagement. So this is taking the data from the actual connected product and actually using that data to kind of build analytics around how your customers are actually using your product, but also how that fleet is actually being operated. Um, in other sessions, we've talked about kind of the manufacturing data flywheel, um, and this is really kind of feeds into that. You know, if you've now got your product connected out in the field, not only are you providing additional functions and features to your customers and creating better customer engagement, but you're getting a wealth of information on how that product is actually operating and being used. 
and you can actually take that data and kind of feed it into your manufacturing processes, into your R&D, you know, MPI cycles to help you innovate and improve on that product. And that kind of then feeds into kind of, you know, looking at how you can actually, you know, optimize that product um, by providing kind of life cycle management and additional functions and features around now about condition-based monitoring and kind of advanced analytics and machine learning capabilities around predictive maintenance. And these are services that you can actually start providing to your customer because now you've got that fleet analytics to understand how your products are being operated and how they're being used. You can then start building analytical models that can provide feedback about certain conditions, anomalies and alerts. But then you can actually start to do you know, predictive maintenance um, and provide you know, feedback back to your customers to say, um, we want to actually service your product at this particular time or provide that data to kind of your repair or parts department so when you see that there's potentially going to be some failures coming along. And all that kind of capability around, you know, the analytics and the insight you get will then you allow you to actually start looking at how you can actually change your business model and start to go look at, you know, product as a service. And this may be, you know, going to SLA or outcome based kind of engagements with your customer because, you know, you understand how that product's being used and you've got, you know, the machine learning capabilities to be able to predict when there's actually a failure, then you could also provide, you know, as a service like zero downtime capabilities and build in the servicing and warranty and spares that's actually required to actually deliver that capability. So now I want to talk about, you know, the actual kind of capability that we're actually going to build out in your smart connected product on that cloud platform. And we're kind of looking at kind of like five main parts, you know, within, you know, our cloud, we're obviously going to have our data lake which is going to provide kind of the central logical repository of where we're actually going to store our data from our connected products, but also our interactions with our customers and our internal departments. And then around that, we're going to have our fleet management capabilities, being able to actually manage all our products out there, be able to provide ability for remote control and management. So this is if you're customer is actually wanting to send a remote command to the actual product itself. An example, you maybe if this is a connected vehicle, they want to unlock the car, or if it's a robot vacuum cleaner within their home, they might actually want to send it off to start to actually vacuum it and so forth. And then from your point of view as the actual manufacturer, you actually want to be able to kind of manage that fleet um, and do over there updates or firmware updates and so forth. So we need to be able to have that secure communication and be able to manage that connectivity. Then at kind of the center of all of this is the management of the telemetry, uh, ingesting that, bringing it into the data lake, and around that telemetry, any kind of events that are generated by the actual connected products itself. And these may be standard events, you know, starting, stopping their actual life cycle, or there may be anomalies and alert events. And then we need to work out how we're actually gonna manage those events. And that kind of feeds into kind of the whole anomaly detection um, capabilities on top of our telemetry. As we're ingesting our telemetry data, any potential anomalies that we detect, we actually want to take action on it. And this may be an action of just notifying the user of the product, or it may be actually collating those anomalies across your whole fleet and providing that feedback into your customer support teams for them to take action. And then finally, we then look at all the advanced capabilities that I've just talked about around the analytics and predictive machine learning that we can do things around predictive quality and predictive maintenance and the value added services that we can provide to our customers through those connected products. And I mentioned at the beginning, but kind of, you know, ensuring that, you know, everything we do here is secure. Um, so, you know, all the interaction between kind of the product and the cloud platform or the mobile application, the cloud platform is done securely, the securely data ingest and secure and communications and so forth. So in supporting, you know, everything I've just spoken about around kind of the use cases and the capabilities of, you know, smart products and machines, um, we've developed this uh, smart product machine reference architecture, um, which is available from the um, smart products um, page of aws.amazon.com slash manufacturing. And also we have a smart product reference solution 
that you can actually download from our AWS solutions page, which will actually allow you to deploy a default solution using a CloudFormation template that you can actually get up and running with a demo um, smart product of a HVAC system and actually start building out kind of the capabilities and so see how a smart product would run on AWS. So at this point, I'd like to hand over to Mr. Choi of Hyundai and for him to take you through their um, journey of building their smart services for their connected machines on AWS. Thank you for introducing me and thank you for giving us this chance to share our story. To begin with, let me introduce my company, Hyundai Construction Equipment Manufactures and Sells Construction Equipment and Industrial you know, Vehicles. It has a network of 540 dealers globally and operates cooperation in major countries around the world, including the US and Europe. This phrase is taken from our official website and our company's major business model is manufacturing and selling, in the, selling the physical product. Why does a manufacturing company start thinking about smart services? This is one of the points I'm going to talk about today. Hyundai Construction Equipment launched a smart solution brand to provide smart product. It's called Hyundai Connect. It consists of three sub-brands, HiMate for uptime, High Assist for productivity, and High Detect for safety. HiMate, one of the smart solutions, has been providing remote monitoring of equipment in the form of web services for about 10 years. In the in other words, it is a telematic system of Hyundai construction equipment. In the last two years, we developed and released various services such as fleet report service and a new mobile web, which is specialized for fleet management. One of these reasons, uh, we have been able to develop and launch various platforms and application in a short period of time is that we have been on the cloud journey since 2018. Two years ago, we had been struggling to improve HiMate's reliability and connection speed. Besides, there are many backlogs to develop to meet the customer's needs. We chose AWS Cloud and started migration for quality of services and efficiency of development. We set a plan of architecture optimization to run DevOps. In addition, to maximize the usability of data, we added a journey to create an analytics environment and pursue data ops. We set up an analytic environment and named it Digital Market Model. Before, we can say we have digital machine and high meat, which are digital twins of real machines, and these have given us insights such as operation condition and status of each machine. The initial goal of the, the, this analysis environment was to construct a digital twin of the market situation, that is, the digital market, and gain insights about the market with the information from multiple machines with this new ground for analysis. To achieve this, we connect this environment with equipment operation of information from HiMate and in-house business system such as ERP and MES. Plus, we added market trend index such as raw material prices into the data lake. We constructed an analysis environment where data can be utilized smoothly. Data engineers pre-processed this through ETL and Lambda, and they display the result in the data mart. Data scientists code analysis algorithms in R or Python through a notebook service and perform analysis through EC2 or Amazon SageMaker. Finally, data citizens, sometimes called champion in the field, build dashboard through Seth BI or run simple queries to drive data into insight. Before, without the environment, data stored on the analysis computer for a long time but with this environment, we can uh, flow the data analysis uh, throughout the company. 
Thanks to this cloud analytic environment, we are able to analyze on the products, predict markets, and evaluate quality for our own business. Also, it has been a springboard for providing services such as fleet statistics and downtown analysis to customers. Initially, it was aimed at gaining insight of the marketplace, but now it has been expanded to a sandbox for all kinds of data analysis. Through these cloud journeys, we can accelerate the development of the application. We were able to achieve efficient operation by scalability, which is often referred to as the, the advantage of cloud. The biggest advantage I feel is that we can start development right now without wait, waiting for IT resources to be set up. This allowed us to achieve continuous innovation not only in the application itself, but also in research and development. When I first started migrating to the cloud, I remember having persuaded many people to get special approval from the company. For these days, every time I start a new development product, people say, why do you just build on the cloud right now? Now, to get to the main point, smart service, let me tell you something that many people talk about the change, change of industry 4.0 or the first industrial revolution. Previously, the value chain structure of traditional manufacturing was like this. It's a traditional manufacturer selling products made with traditional engineering to traditional customers. The changes created smart products and smart engineering with the emergence of IoT, data analysis techniques, and AI, ML, and digital twins. Smart manufacturers obtain data of smart customers from smart products and apply them to better product, service, or engineering. While this may be sufficient, today's smart manufacturing industry is not just producing and product, producting and selling products, it is uh, expanding to its value chain into the domain of smart services. Some companies create new business model by decoupling smart services. To make this possible, it requires a smart service platform, data and algorithms to run it, and a closely connected pipeline, which is called a data fabric. In the construction equipment industry, such innovation is progressing too. IoT was introduced very early for construction equipment. At that time, the word IoT was not used. We called it M2M communication or telematics. Although complete autonomous operation is far off due to the nature of equipment, semi-automation semi called machine guidance and machine control are becoming more common. Discussions on smart construction are starting with big construction companies and government institutions. Some companies are trying to build their own ecosystem, and the basis for this was the development of service products that applied telematics and service levels. And the construction equipment also wanted to provide a smart service that combines fault code uh, analysis developed through uh, research so far, data accumulated through telematics, and fleet management service using analysis of the data. So, what are the factors that make this change? First one is a rapidly changing digital environment or digitalization. Just as the cloud has become the new normal, smarter services are becoming more common. For example, failure prediction through machine learning. In addition, the scope of customer service is expanded and people get higher expectation in this regard. It includes uptime coverage or special care services. It's very difficult to respond to this with traditional services, which rely on skillful service personnel with know-how. 
There is another challenge on the path to transforming traditional services into smart services. First of all, it is impossible to become a tech company suddenly and provide smart services because resources, resources and skillful IT engineers are always limited. And at best, there was no guarantee that this would succeed. There is a problem of understanding needs, whether it is a real customer's want or not. Finally, there is a question of how to combine traditional service providers and technologies with existing interests. When it comes to build smart service for construction equipment, the fact that there is no ready-made digital solution suitable for the construction equipment industry, and the fact that is, in general, there is no choice but to use a dealer service organization has come as a challenge. In addition, when it comes to understanding customers' needs, there was a lack of established rules except for telematics. While we have these concerns, AWS introduced us Amazon's digital innovation program in shortly the IP. Many colleagues, colleagues agree with this methodology, and we started a smart service journey with DIP. The point of DIP is a working backward process from the customer's pain point and value, creating a PR material in advance. Starting with the working backward workshop, we drive a press, re press release, FAQ, and visual scenario from the customer journey. Subsequently, through a solution workshop, we decided the scope of implementation and how we build them. Some item was accomplished by us, some item and of decided to prototype prototyping with AWS. On this journey, the key business challenges were how to maximize uptime of customers' machine. This boiled down to the following questions. How to minimize downtime by fixing a machine easily? How to di diagnose the problem remotely? To solve this problem, we started prototyping with a combination of what we already have and what we want to make. The part of prototyping with AWS is the development of the AI ML pipeline, one of the core functions of the smart services. First pipeline is AI diagnostics. It includes data gathering from the edge and training and monitoring in the cloud. Distribution of AI failure diagnosis algorithm from the cloud to the edge. Second one is repair part recommendation when a fault code occurs. It is a pipeline that continuously improving the recommendation result from the input of the sub service records by machine learning. One of the difficulties in building smart services was the resource. The AWS prototyping team suggested uh, the agile process to resolve this uh, difficulty. So with this three sprint, we were able to get a working result in a relatively short period of time. And we organized the Scrum as a cross-functional two pizza team. The, scr the Scrum consists of AWS prototyping team and that combines data analysis, IT, and service personnel from Hyundai construction equipment. With aid of collaboration tools and several workshops, we were able to build the prototype we wanted. In this way, we can get the architecture of part recommendation pipeline with a combination of Amazon SageMaker, Glue, and Lambda, and a data collection and model training pipeline crossing the edge and cloud that combines AWS IoT Greengrass and SageMaker. In particular, these algorithms and infrastructure can be automatically deployed from development by just a few commands.
This was an impressive experience to be able to deploy such algorithm and infra infrastructure with data uh, DevOps pipeline. Through this, the core module of the ML part that can perform smart services was implemented. I will explain AI diagnostic module in more depth. When the anomaly detection lambda function is stored in IoT Greengrass triggers, the internal data collected from the equipment is transmitted to the cloud. The data passing through the device gateway, IoT rules, and bucket can be monitored by Elasticsearch and Kibana dashboard. This is a path for analyzing anomaly detection result. The data in bucket can be used in another path. With normal anomal, anomal uh, judgment, the data becomes a new learning material, training anomaly uh, model in SageMaker. This trained model is deployed to the edge through IoT Greengrass and Lambda function. The edge is updated with a more precise model. In addition to the data collection, training and deployment pipeline crossing this edge and cloud, we have built DevOps pipeline that maintains and improve uh, that maintains and improve the overall architecture in parallel. In the part recommendation model, you start with the input of fault code and part replacement history collected from high mate and service records. When the collected data enters ETL and SageMaker, a new data set is trained and the result is extracted. You can analyze this result with Elasticsearch and Kibana. Meanwhile, the, the result is saved in DynamoDB and you can make it as an API to serve against with uh, again, uh, again through the high mate. As a result, when a fault code occurs, a recommendation is made of which part is, uh, which parts to replace. And after program performing the service, the result is re-entered to the machine learning pipeline. In addition to these tens of outcomes, we can get additional fruits through the prototyping. Experience of the agile process, which was difficult to experience due to the nature of the manufacturing industry. DevOps process reading from IDEs such as uh, Cloud9 to Cloud Formation, and the know-how of managing MSA through the combination of IAC and Git that merges that infrastructure infrastructures as code. With this knowledge and experience can be applied to another project. My team has learned from a lot. The overall lesson from the journey of building smart services are that you should solve the resource part by modularizing the core part and wisely connecting it with existing services, rather than trying to get a solution at once. Another point is building and pro uh, proving a hypothesis from the customer's point of view as possible. If you don't start to act and listen, customers uh, listen, customers don't tell what they want. To minimize this ris risk, starting small is good. And the organization, it should be a, a purpose-oriented team of people from various backgrounds. Before the participating of field service personnel, this uh, only result from R&D was not practical. More various opinions have made it better. Looking back at the application of the working backwards process, in building smart services. Actually, it was not a smooth process and there are various difficulties. One of them was having a coherent strategy from the outset, which was a significant burden. And conflicts of interest between the various departments had to be coordinated. Securing the voice of the customer was also a difficult part. 
However, uh, if I look at this, those uh, di difficulties differently, I think that each has its strengths. In particular, efforts to secure customers' contact, contact point are part of the purpose of smart services. Throughout, the, throughout this journey, I shared with you Hyundai Construction Requirement runs smart services, which is called high care. This will include remote diagnostics through anomaly detection, preventive maintenance through part recommendation, and analysis monitoring service for equipment groups by using the uh, in analytic environment we set up in the cloud. Thanks to the AWS DI team and prototyping team for helping us on our journey to this point. In the future, Honda Construction Equipment is expected to be able to provide better smart services to smart customers by util util utilizing innovative services of AWS. Thank you for listening to the presentation. Thank you, Mr. Choi, for sharing Hyundai Construction Equipment's journey of building your smart services on AWS. Um, I'd like to say to all attendees, um, could you please complete the session survey? Um, your feedback is greatly appreciated. And with that, I'd like to wrap up the session and say thank you. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm Steve Blackroll, the Worldwide Tech Leader for Manufacturing at Amazon Web Services. And with me today, I have Mr. Choi, the ICT Development Team Leader for Hyundai Construction Equipment. Thank you.